1931, Mexican repatriation becomes law. Mexicans who don't go quietly are subject to varying forms and degrees of harassment. Many are charged with vagrancy. Others are arrested for violation of new state marijuana laws, laws that are often an excuse to drive Mexicans out of the country. To Anslinger, there is nothing glamorous about fighting drugs, but soon he sees that it is one of the most important issues of his time, endorsed by some of the country's most powerful men, like publisher William Randolph Hearst. Anslinger went to visit Hearst at San Simeon Castle. I guess it was one time. And Hearst told him that he personally wrote all of the anti-drug editorials in the Hearst newspapers. The Bureau's efforts have been aimed at fighting heroin and cocaine, but with Anslinger's arrival in 1930, marijuana is the new drug problem born out of the trouble in the Southwest with Mexican migrant workers. There is continued pressure on the government in Washington to do something about these Mexican immigrants who smoked marijuana and went into town on the weekends and, and created havoc. Texas, California, Arizona, and Colorado insist it's the federal government's responsibility to do something, but Anslinger resists. He wants to avoid a law that will be difficult to enforce. By and large, there was nothing they could do about it. There was no real big action. They didn't have the funding. They didn't have the people. And um, he, I remember he said to me once, I was driving uh, around the upper Potomac, and I was crossing the bridge, and I just parked on the bridge. And I got out and I looked, and there was marijuana plants as far as you could see. And he said, I said to myself, then they want me to wipe this, this out. Anslinger can do nothing to stop the push from states of the Southwest for a federal law against marijuana. The issue is less about the dangers of the drugs and more about politics. Marijuana is entangled in immigration problems. I remember when I interviewed Harry Anslinger about it, uh, he said we weren't having any trouble with it. Uh, you could get it in Harlem, he said, and it just it was not a problem. Uh, but the, the pressure came from the Southwest and the West, where the uh, Mexican immigrants were seen as a unnecessary and uh, dangerous surplus population. And so there was a tremendous campaign to try to push the uh, Mexican immigrants back into Mexico. And marijuana got mixed up in, in that because there was no question that they grew marijuana and smoked marijuana. In the end, the southwestern states prevail upon Anslinger to do something. The pressure is on for Anslinger to use the power of the federal government to control marijuana. Ever the bureaucrat, Anslinger changes his position and becomes a leading warrior against marijuana. The Treasury Department intends to pursue a relentless warfare against the despicable dope peddling vulture who preys on the weakness of his fellow man. His chief weapons are movies that express exaggerated dangers of the drug. The truth is that every reefer is loaded with immorality and bestial perversions, brutality, murder, sex crimes, insanity, or suicide. While a propaganda war against marijuana is underway, Anslinger begins working to draft a law. But what kind of law? A law was passed called the National Firearms Act, which said that you could not give, borrow, or transfer a machine gun to anyone without a machine gun transfer stamp. And it turns out they aren't, the government would not make any machine gun transfer stamps. The Supreme Court ruled the National Firearms Act was legal, and its use of stamps, even though purposely not available, was legitimate. Anslinger now has a model for a national ban against marijuana. Anslinger told me that the general counsel of the Treasury Department came into his office holding this decision by the uh, Supreme Court saying, look, we finally we have a way to go after marijuana. The law requires that anyone wishing to buy, sell, distribute, or transfer marijuana must pay a tax and have a stamp. The penalty for failure to do so is five years in jail, a $2,000 fine, or both. But like the machine gun law, the government doesn't make the marijuana stamps available. 